Hello everyone, my name is Justine Ryan. I am honored to welcome you to the Q&A for A Woman on the Outside. Uh, we are here with uh, both uh, the duo of the both directors and both producers. We have Lisa Reardon Seville and we also have uh, Zara Katz um, and they teamed up together to make this amazing documentary um, that I honestly loved I'm, I, I was looking at it on Instagram to follow uh, follow them so uh, but um, before we uh, get into uh, the questions um, I do want to uh, say uh, on behalf of the Bentonville Film Festival I would like to take this time to acknowledge the indigenous people that were forced to leave their ancestral lands including the Osage, Caddo, Quapaw Nations which have ties to the Northwest Arkansas area. We further recognize that a portion of the Trail of Tears runs through this area and that the Cherokee, Ch Choctaw, Muscogee, Chickasaw, and Seminole Nations pass through what we now know as Arkansas during their forced removal. We acknowledge all the indigenous storytellers and residents in our community, community and region. Thank you. Um, I am honored and privileged to welcome you, uh, the directors and producers of A Woman on the Outside. Um, I, one, watched it with like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? It, and even the first shot, um, when they're talking about what they do you have so much empathy for not just the women um that are traveling to uh to to the jails to the prisons um but also the inmates and you you don't even we only really see um really two um and it's from uh, crystal's family but i i loved that in the filming and how the story was already being told without even seeing some of the people's faces. And um, in my, my first question, so we should start from the beginning, what uh, charged you um, to to do this documentary on uh, such a, in, in such a, a particular area, but also um, that really does affect a specific uh, community or, or people? Um, well, we, the the short version of the story is that um, Zara and I both have journalism backgrounds. I am a reporter and she is a photo editor and visual producer. And um, some years prior to starting the film, we started an Instagram feed called Everyday Incarceration. That was really part of our joint storytelling of, um, Zara said that she got so much of her news through photographs, but there in 2014, there were very few photographs of kind of the carceral system um, that has some, changed somewhat. And so we teamed up to say like, what does it look like? And Zara reached out to um, her community and we started putting together an archive of sort of the visual stories of mass incarceration. And one that we came to feel was missing in part because Zara does a lot of uh, work around kind of like female photographers and the female lens and, and women's stories. Um, and many of my sources were women on the outside who had loved ones inside. And we felt like that story was missing. So we um, sort of started doing these focus groups, including with um, some support from this thing called the Magnum Foundation, a photo foundation. And we started asking women, what stories, what is your story? What stories do you want to hear? And through um, a friend of a friend, we basically got, we showed up at a a customer appreciation cookout of crystals one day. We're from New York, she's from Philly. And immediately she was like, you gotta talk to this woman. You gotta talk to this woman. All these women have stories. And then eventually it was, you gotta ride the van. Um, and so this, this project that started kind of broad and a collection of stories um, then became, you know, riding Crystal's van and meeting all the women there. And then increasingly narrowed to Crystal's story as um, the men in, who were incarcerated came home and a whole nother story kind of started up about what it was to be a woman on the outside when other people come back outside. Yeah, and, and just a comment on what you noticed early on about not 
seeing the inside of the prison. That was a really intentional part of making this film that, you know, comes into this initial charge, as you said, of where are the stories of the women and the family members who are so often picking up the pieces, but you don't see it in the same way. Um, you know, it is not the graphic prison building either structurally inside or outside or potentially even the stories of re-entry. It is, you know, this invisible claw that just grips your life. Um, you know, it's the phone calls that you're always have the phone in your hand because you're waiting for your loved one to call you. You can't call them. It's working, you know, double, triple shifts so that you can pay to go visit them, that you can help them afford food through commissary, you can pay for the calls. Um, you know, it's taking care of your your whole family and often it's really stigmatized. So it's very secretive that you never talk about it. Um, so not seeing the inside of the prison is was very intentional as part of making this film. Um, and then, but then really going into Crystal's life and seeing her family and her father and her brother as as they come out of prison yeah and you you really start to root for them like you root for the entire family um from uh Jave uh Jave coming out um to uh Nave uh for the mom for the dad even the older brother um you start to root for them all and as the story um keeps going it's it's heartbreaking but it's also like heartfelt at the same time and that's kind of the thing that teetered on like I was like I'm trying not to cry, <laughs> cry. um but being so happy but also like really taking in the the hard moments and as you said like a lot of times people don't think about um the you know the loose ends that have to be tied um, and they can only be tied by somebody outside um, and that somebody else outside has to also have the funds, you know, the access to money to be able to do that. And, you know, hearing specifically Crystal's story on um, how she never really got to spend like time with her dad outside of prison because she was, I want to say three when he went in mm -hmm. and and I, I and it's so funny you're watching this. And you're like, man, how old is it? It's like she looks so young. And then she says her age. I was like, oh my gosh, like, um, I want to say we're probably the same age in real time. Um, but it's it's what because she's the one that survived. So you see this level, so many layers just for Crystal herself. This level of um, being the only girl, but also being like the survivor of the environment of also being the one that kind of, you know, that made it. Um, mm -hmm. And being the one that's taking care of her nephew. You, you you see how it is starting to weigh down on her. She's passionate about her work and what she does, but um, it's starting to, you know, weigh down on her because it is a lot to do, you know, to be able to be the stronghold of your family. Um, it is a lot and to have done it for a long time. Um, but. I guess my, and it leads to my other question is, when did you realize the story wasn't, um, had to be about Crystal and her family? Um, cause you did mention that you had all these other stories, but you realize, um, the, the major story is with, you know, the founders of Bridging the Gap, um, with her and her mother, when did you realize uh, they had to be the, or Crystal had, I guess, little Crystal, the yeah, big Crystal, <laughs> but when did you realize um, uh, Crystal uh, Bush had to be the, uh, had to be the center of the story? I think, you, we worked together for a long time. There was a multimedia exhibition first that was really focused on Crystal and her riders. Um, but I think as we kept filming and spending time with her, once her dad and her brother came home, it just felt like that was the, the piece to follow. Um, and she was the central figure there. Um, and, you know, I, I think 
I really appreciate what you kind of got out of it because I think she wants to, it was a, it was a toggling for us between these highs and lows um, and how you sort of capture that as well as, you know, the fact that she has a life, which, you know, um, you see sort of in bits and pieces, but she does have friends and she tries to create a social life. You know, there were times where it was overwhelming. Um, but she always wanted to describe that it was overwhelming as well, that that being the one in your family that does make it, you know, you, you often are debating between, do I carry everyone with me or do I let go and what does that mean? And that's a really terrible choice as is com somewhat similar to the choice that you make when someone goes to prison. Do I kind of stick by their side and get incarcerated sort of halfway with them? Or do I cut ties, which, you know, is hard for everyone. Um, but those are the sort of devil's bargains that that have to be made. And I think one thing that she really wanted to, to show. Um, and she was a really important collaborator. I mean, we continue to talk all the time, especially as the film's rolling out. She's going to most film festivals. It's getting a little complicated because she has a life. <laughs> um, but she, you know, she saw cuts of the film. We talked about the story. And over time, we realized her, her voice needed to be more and more primary, not just looking at her, but actually hearing from her and her grounding us in either voiceover or interviews. So she is really driving the van <laughs> um, of, of the film. And that, that became increasingly important too. Yeah, and you know, the other, two very essential people to our very, very small team um, are Kira C. Jones, who is our producer and also um, the writer, and as well as our editor, Susanna Herbert. So, you know, Lisa and I worked at, with Crystal and her family filming for close to six years, and we really did it in an observational style. You know, I mean, we were just there and that was part of the collaboration is that Crystal was often calling us, hey, come down, I think you guys should film this. Um, you know, we were seeing things on her Instagram and calling her, hey, can we come down and film you at the gym? It seems like, you know, that's really your place of strength. Um, and, then, you know, with having Kira come on, who is an incredibly experienced filmmaker and also a Black woman who has had some personal experience, there were these very deep conversations from day one about us as filmmakers, about the story, um, you know, about everything we had captured on footage. And then with the inclusion of Susanna, who started from you know, day one watching all 400 hours of footage, um, that it was really this conversation between the four of us on how to shape this narrative and then having Crystal kind of watch cuts or talking to her about how the narrative was coming together. Um, and Kiera really was so key in honing in on Crystal's role in in essentially saving her nephew, you know, mm -hmm. in how important it was for Crystal to save, you know, this young man and make sure that he had a different life than his father and, you know, a different experience than both, even though her and Nave have a very parallel experience with having their fathers incarcerated most of their life, how could she ensure that he had a different ending? And, you know, they're, without giving it away, you know, it, it is very joyful and they're both doing really well. And um, it, it's awesome to see that and, and to still be in contact with them and their whole family. That, I think that is something, um, and thank you, Kier, for doing that because I loved how Neve was very, um, was very innocent, but also very aware and was able to keep us innocent. A lot of times um, uh, kids aren't able to keep that. They have to grow up um, very, very um, expeditiously um, when in situations like that. And to be able to see him, because he had a village, 
be, be able to see him like be able to say, yeah, I know I can't say this around my mom, like my, my birth mom, because I know she'll get upset and still be able to be a kid. A lot of times um, kids aren't able to live in those both live in both worlds. And um, I loved that he was able to and that um, you even see, you know, obviously them getting upset. She was upset because he didn't do his work. And, you know, obviously he wasn't going through a hard time because his, his father is just um turned himself in for a crime that um that you know he was like I didn't do and luckily the charges were cleared but um you could see that and it looks like his schoolwork is how he would show I need help I need attention and um I think that is like part of you already knows like Crystal's gonna be okay, but to see Neve make it um, was like, oh my gosh, okay, whew, I can breathe. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I really loved that in the film and seeing um, even how it ends um, that she, you know, they um, worked to take him on a trip that he's always wanted to go on. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I wanna, I want to go uh, t quickly talk about uh, behind the scenes, behind the camera, because um, I, I loved the v diversity in the even the diversity of Black women um, mm -hmm. and religiously showing. And if you've ever been to Philly, you know that um, you will, you know, outside of you know um, the Black community, you know, just Black people. When it comes to religion, it's almost like two major religions. You're either Christian or you're Muslim, mm -hmm. and I. Um, I loved seeing the representation of both there and seeing the um, and also seeing uh, them getting along. I think a lot of times we we put the two against each other, but specifically um, in Philly, it's so intertwined. It's you, you can't really pull it apart. It's yeah, my cousin's Muslim. I'm Christian. Like it, it's a, it's an everyday thing. It's 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 common. <laughs> it's so common. And I loved um, watching that because I think that is such a true and pure um, look on uh, w how Philly is. Um, yeah. but when it comes to the diversity behind the camera, um, when it came to doing certain things, uh, whether it's lighting, editing, um, how did you uh, particularly uh, look for people? Did you already have people in mind that you wanted to use? Or was it like you learned about somebody and was like, we need to work with them? So how did that work uh, for both of you? Um, we thought a lot, you know, as two white women directors, this was a huge part of our conversation, a really explicit one with um, the family. And then as we put together our team. And so when Kira came on, I mean, she was the third person on the team. <laughs> and a core, like core partner in every possible way. Um, Susanna is a white woman and um, has done films about, she did a film called Wrestle, she directed it and edited quite a bit of it. And so she comes from Memphis and the film, she, in her film, she dealt with some of the same stuff. Um, you know, one thing to be really candid that was really hard for us is we had no budget for a long time. And so one of the questions is how do you put together a team? And particularly, we paid everyone always, but you know, for the like for incredible creators of color are deservedly in high demand. So that was really interesting over time. But we hired before Susanna came on full time, we hired a series of editors and we were like, could we have two weeks, could we, you know, and like, as we were putting together trailers and almost exclusively hired black women as our editing team early on. And that was so crucial to even the like early interpretation of the footage. Um, and we had a lot of conversations and though they became our watchers later on, you know, they gave us feedback and it was cool for, to hear from them too, cause they, they might have edited like year two footage and all of a sudden they had a relationship with Crystal and her family from having watched that. Um, we hired several consulting editors to do watches and those were all, um, all editors of color, mostly 
majority black women. And I think for us, it was really important. Like, how is this playing? You know, what, what are, where are our blind spots? And also we're creating a team of people who hopefully are rooting for the film and, um, and sort of helping us navigate through all these places. Cause there's a lot of complexity. This is a really intimate family story. It has to do with prison. It has to do with, there's conflict, you know, and I think the way that that played and making sure, as Sarah said, like we were doing our push-ups. <laughs> um, and also, cause it's not, it's not monolithic, you know, like every viewer comes with their own stuff and several folks gave us like really hard feedback early on, which we took really seriously. Um, and then sometimes people give you feedback of various kinds that you're like, eh. but, but I think for us, our goal was always to not make it a film that was trying to explain for white people. Um, and, and that, that was really crucial. And so who we had on our team, um, I mean, Zara and I shot virtually the whole thing. So there was no one doing lighting, <laughs> which explains the lighting. Uh, but um, it, it's a conversation we had so much on our team and keep having, and thank you for asking that question. Cause I think we are thinking a lot about that as we go. Mm -hmm. um, and got, you know, it's part of that dialogue about how you make documentary now. And, and how that works, so. I don't know, Zara, if you have. <laughs> uh, I, I, everything, you know, that Lisa said that, you know, is just exactly in line with the fact that we continue to have this conversation and that is really important to us. Um, and that, you know, Crystal's voice is, the center of this film and driving this film. And that was so essential to the final outcome um, that Crystal's able to explain her story. And she, you know, doesn't represent all black women. She doesn't represent all women. She is Crystal and represents her story. And that is so important to this film. I think to just what you said about Philly in general, like it helped, we spent a lot of time there and all, you know, those rides are long and you get to know people and because we did these separate interviews and it was really, even though it's not about sort of that part of Philly, like to capture that was really important to us. Those van rides, I mean, yeah, like when Eric is like, look at my like, you know, girls in their key bars looking so beautiful. And there's footage that we didn't include where Erica is talking about like, yeah, my mom is Christian and a pastor. And at one point she was in a relationship with a Muslim man and that is so Philly. Um, but again, we didn't need to explain that. It's sort of like, if you know Philly, you get to watch that. And if we you don't, <laughs> you just kind of do your thing. <laughs> it really was like the girls who get it, get it. The girls who don't. don't. And I, I, I loved it. I have um, a family that um, is from Philly. I have friends who have um, grown up in, I have friends who have, um, who are the ones who have like survivor's remorse. Mm -hmm. um, two friends I met in England, both African American, oh, both black American. Um, and the, I have a friend the day uh, she left to go to England uh, for school was also the same day her sister was being incarcerated. And so watching this, it's like I, I know somebody who is who who is Crystal. I I know a I know a couple. I know a few Crystals. Um, and it, it's it is hard to to watch this, um, in a sense of because you don't want this to be so many people's stories, but the also the good thing in watching this is even though this may be their story, it's not the end of the story. Um, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a rainbow that is come with a pot of gold at the end. Um, and it's not just for them, it's also for their family, uh, mm -hmm. regardless of how everything goes. Um, and you see that at the end, even with um, Crystal losing um, her brother, her older brother, 
and um, even in her father had to go back to jail um, for something very minute. Um, it also showed how the system doesn't work or help anybody. It literally keeps you in the system. And her getting, her, her, I think her major win out of all of this wasn't necessarily her, her brothers getting out, her, her father getting out, getting another ride to another, you know, prison. It was getting Neve as adopting Neve. And, um, uh, I, I loved that because it was kind of like her saying, I'm stopping this cycle. Like it's not going to continue. And so that's definitely, uh, one of the things you realize watching this, but you begin to root for, um, and you just begin to love so much. And so, um, I, I do have one more question. Um, I would like, uh, if you would like to share, um, what's next, if you're working on something next and what you want viewers to, uh, walk away with after seeing this film. Um, let me start with the second question because I already frustrated somebody doing this, but I really wanted to hear what people got out of it. I think we tried not to make a film with a singular message. It's been really interesting to hear people, like which part they pick up on. But I guess if, if we had to be one, I think we really wanted people to understand what women go through if they haven't been on the inside of this. And for women who have, I think we hoped that they would feel less alone or be, you know, it would provide a beginning of a dialogue between people to say like, we're all here. And what does that look like if we talk about it? Because in many, you know, in the van, it's it's very open, but in a lot of your life, you're not sharing with people, you know, what's going on. Um, but it is so common. And as you said, you know, you know, crystals, like you, you've been there. So um, in terms of what's next, uh, You'll hear in a minute, but I'm I'm on the road with the, well, both on the road with the film, but I'm a little more because Zara's got a few things going on now. Um, I'm doing a little development on um, a new film, maybe. And we also do have a short that's almost done. And so we are trying, it's about another family in Philly. We started them at the same time. <laughs> um, so we are hoping to to finish that up and and bring it home at some point. It's called Siobhan. Zara? Yeah, um, I am, am currently working as the uh, photography director at NBC News Digital. So that's back to my <laughs> roots as a photo editor and visual producer um, and an incredible team to be working with. Um, but, you know, still very involved with this film and hoping to get our short <laughs> out as well. And, you know, of course, want to make another film again in in my life. Um, many films, hopefully. Um, and yeah, to, you know, just add to what, you know, we wanted people to get out of the film, the moments that we've been able to be, be in theaters and have audience members there and hear them laughing has been so moving and so such an incredible part of this journey um, because it, the laughter is so important um, you know just as much as Crystal and her mom are willing to share the hard parts and to talk about that and to talk about the strain on their mental and physical health um, so I think that that connection to audience members, both who have had this experience and feel um, empowered to talk about it. Um, and for those who haven't had this experience and are able to like realize what the weight of it, um, both of those sides have been really incredible um, to hear after, you know, the screenings and started even early on with the photo project, you know, the number of women who came up to us and whispered that they had a family member or a friend or a loved one who had been incarcerated is really, you know, an astronomical number that, that we don't hear about and we don't know about. So, you know, hopefully that that connection and that 
um, strength to talk about it if you want to and know that there are many crystals out there who might be willing to talk about it with you is something that we really are hoping for with the film and and rolling out an impact campaign you know later in this year along with more screenings yeah and just as lastly like I think we tried to make a family story and everyone has a family and I think some of the most gratifying moments have been like whether or not people have had this experience or no Philadelphia when someone's like I thought about my dad or I thought about my brother or I thought about my mom or I thought about myself um you know I think that's you know to create a round story that has all the elements of joy and sorrow and complexity and mistakes and successes is what we hope to do. Um, and our team is, um, Kira is working on a screenplay or doing some screenwriting and uh, Susanna's in development on a new film. And so Kira C. Jones and Susanna Herbert are people you should watch because they are incredible and they're coming at you in one way or another. Oh, I'm excited. I really do hope to hear their work. Um, again, thank you so much for spending time with us, taking time out of your day to answer these questions, but um, to also share your perspective and your knowledge um, in the creative uh, process of a woman on the outside. Uh, thank you so much for bringing Crystal to light, uh, showing us who Crystal is. Um, and I'm just super appreciative. I'm, I, have, I have friends that have really want to see this um, because they will definitely see themselves in Crystal. So thank you again so much and thank you for all the viewers watching. Um, we hope that you enjoyed this Q&A and also the film. Thank you so much. Um, thank, thank you for you. watching in your kind. It means so much when, when people respond to the film. So. <laughs>